This lab tutorial is about how to find out what has gone wrong in your circuit. I will use a simple circuit to show you how to debug an op -amp circuit. If the problem is nothing seems to happen, the first thing we got to check is the input signal. So we can show both of the input output voltages on the scope. So here the input and output voltages can be shown on an oscilloscope. Apparently the input signal is zero. So we need to check our circuit, see if the input, the power supply is connected correctly. So here we got loose connection for the input voltage. So now it's connected. So now we can check the oscilloscope, the display on the oscilloscope. It seems to be right. If the input signal is correct, but the output is still not right, sometimes we need to look for leads that are touching each other. So let's look at the circuit. The input seems to be right, but the output is still zero. So let's check the circuit here. So here, look at this point. The scope and the output and also the common ground, these are touching each other. So if the output is saturated, generally we need to check the power supplies to the op -amp chip. We know as uh, other integrated circuits, the power supply chips need to be powered. For example, the TL072 needs to be powered by 15 volts and negative 15 volts. So if the output is saturated, let's check the power supplies to the TL072 chip. The DC power supplies we use to power the op amp. So here we need to check the positive 15 volt power supply and also the negative 15 volts power supply. So here's positive 15 volts. Let's look at it. So it should be positive 15 volts. And also the negative 15 volt power supply should be set up correctly. So here's negative 15 volts. Now we can turn that on. See the output looks right at this point because we have supplied the op -amp chip with the correct power supplies. Here I just want to mention that for the adjuvant DC power supplies, the positive 25 and negative 25 volt power supplies, there are two separate power supplies. We need to set the voltage separately. For example, the output voltage doesn't look right. So after we check the positive 15 volts, so it seems to be right. But then we click on the negative 25 volt power supply. So here, let's see. 25 is OK. For the negative 25 volts, the setting is negative 2 volts. That's the problem. So here, we need to adjust it to negative 15 volts. So we can check the output. Now it looks right. We also need to make sure the power supply ground is connected to the right place of the circuit. For example, right now the output voltage looks weird. So what we need to try is to make sure the common ground is connected correctly in the circuit. So let's look at our circuit here. So look at this common ground here. So it's not connected to the common ground. So we need to connect the signal common ground to the circuit. Now the upper signal is correct. If the output is still saturated, we need to make sure the feedback impedance is right. 
For example, we need to make sure the 3.3 .3 kilom resistor is correct. See, the input is correct, but the output voltage is still saturated. After we make sure the powers to the op amp is uh, correct, so we need to check the feedback resistance. So we let me measure the feedback resistance is 29 kilom. That is much higher than the 3.3 .3 kilom resistor. So that's the problem. Let's just uh, go through the steps to debug our circuit. Firstly, we need to check input signal. Then we need to make sure there are no leads touching each other. If the input is correct, but the output is saturated, we need to check the power supplies to the op amp chip. Make sure we have both positive 15 and negative 15 power supplies set up correctly. And the common ground should be connected correctly in the circuit. And feedback resistance should be correct. And all the component values should be correct.